because he said all the days will I wait till my change come Job 17 and 13 if I wait the grave is mine house I have made my bed in the darkness I have said to corruption thou art my father to the worm thou art my mother and my sister and that's what happens with the flesh when you die it becomes corrupted you know the worms eat it but your spirit is with the Heavenly Father only to be sent back into a new body that's why Job said will I wait till my change come all right so that's plain so right it once again that proves what reincarnation all right Hebrews 9 and 27 says this and as it is appointed unto men once to die but after this the judgment so now when you die like pursuant to Ecclesiastes 12 and 7 you go back to the Heavenly Father and then you are judged now when do you serve that judgment pursuant to Hebrews you are judged so when do you serve that judgment you serve it on the planet earth all right in another body okay that's how it works and that is reincarnation all right uh, let's read the book of Job 19 and 25 it says for I know that my Redeemer liveth now this is Job speaking about Yahweh Shai this is Job giving a future prophecy of Yahweh Shai coming back for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth which is true all right <laughs> Yahusha is coming back in these last days to reclaim his um, his rulership. All right, and this is Job prophesying about Yahusha coming back in the last days. And though after my skin worms destroyed his body, now we read about that back in the book of Job 17. I have said to cor corruption, thou art my father; to the worm, thou art my mother. So let's read what Job said again. He said, and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see the Heavenly Father. Why? Because he's going to get another body. And he's going to get another body that he may see Yahweh Shai coming into his rulership. So in other words, Job is saying, look, I know I'm going to be around when Yahweh Shai comes into his rulership, which is about to happen. So guess what? Job is here even as we speak again proven reincarnation reading on it says whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall mine mine eyes shall behold and not another though my reins be consumed within me so now that's a future prophecy of Job proven that Yahweh is coming back and also proven that he's going to be around to see Yahweh come back which proves what reincarnation can't get around it all right the next scripture, Ecclesiastes 1, 9 to 11. The thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Now, as far as I know, we live under the sun, not over the sun, so we are not new. It clearly says there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. Like you have people that are unlearned that say, oh, that's a newborn baby. Well, the flesh that was created by the parents, the house, bodig, remember, from the Latin bodig, the body, that might be new, but the spirit that's in that little baby is not new. That spirit is, is of old time. Well, we'll read it right here. It says, it have been already of old time. Right, the spirit which was before us there is no remembrance of former things now the only thing that can remember inanimate objects can't remember all right but the only thing that can remember is people all right there is no remembrance of former things meaning you don't remember your past life all right neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after so here we mainly concerned with what the past life proving that you lived before then you die and then you come back all right so Ecclesiastes 1 9 to 11 proves again proves reincarnation which means back in the flesh all right now 
Let's go to the book of John 9 and 1. And as Yahweh passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Yahweh answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of the Heavenly Father should be made manifest in him. Now let's examine that. This man was born blind. All right? And the disciples asked Yahweh Shai, well, who sinned? Was it him or his parents? Now, in order for him to sin, for him to be born blind, that means he wasn't, he didn't sin in that life when he was came back blind. He had to have sinned in the previous life for him to come back blind. So what does that prove? Reincarnation. And the fact that the disciples asked Yahweh Shai that proves that they had an understanding of the concept of reincarnation. And the fact that Yahweh Shai didn't rebuke him for asking that question proves that Yahweh Shai knew himself about reincarnation. So that's the point. All right. And then Yahweh Shai goes on to say that no, the man didn't sin, neither did his parents. But the reason why he was born blind is so I can show my spiritual power through him. In other words, you have to have an example of um, the spiritual power being shown which is what Yahweh Shai had, all right? But the main point we derived out of that is that the, un that the disciples had the understanding of the concept of reincarnation, all right? And so did Yahweh Shai, all right? Let's go to the next scripture, Jude. Jude 1 and 5. It's only one chapter long. We'll get right to the point. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not. Now how can you once know something if you never existed in the past? You existed in the past and you knew it. And when you died you came back and you had to learn it all over again. You had to be put in remembrance. So that verse right there proves reincarnation. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Because what's happening with this truth is that we're being put in remembrance of what we knew in the past. Alright? That's all that's happening. And again, that proves reincarnation. Alright? Next scripture. Revelation, uh, the 10th chapter, and we're going to read the 10th to 11th verse. And I took, now this is a vision that John received, the apostle John received on the island of Patmos which was a sentence, and this is around 96 AD, he received, he received a lot of visions. You know, we're going to focus on this one vision that he received, which proves um, reincarnation. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Now this is a metaphor for um, this truth. Because this truth it is sweet as honey when you first learn it. But then it becomes bitter because of the hell that comes with being in this truth. You know, so there's the balance. Um, the bitter and the sweet. That's what you have dealing with this truth. So that's what John was uh, remarking about. And then it goes on to say, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now, as far as we know, there is no record of John prophesying before many nations, uh, speaking, uh, um, prophesying to many tongues and um, kings on the island of Patmos. So when was this prophecy f to be fulfilled? When he comes back in his next life. All right? Which... That, that prophecy was uh, fulfilled when he came back in his next life. Meaning he's going to be around to prophesy before many peoples, nations, and tongues, and kings. All right? So if the concept of reincarnation wasn't real, why would the vision, why would the angel in the vision tell him that you're going to prophesy, gonna, all right? You're going to prophesy, thou must prophesy again, future tense, before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. If the concept of reincarnation is not real, how is that possible? Alright? So, it's clear and it's plain that reincarnation 
exists in the Bible. And that was the importance of this lesson. Alright, so with that, I'll say shalom and we'll see you in the next lesson.